Hello coders and thanks for joining us for another C Sharp Fundamentals tutorial. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about classes and objects. Now in this tutorial we're only going to be focusing on the concepts, some of the major concepts that you guys need to understand before you can write your own classes. And the next tutorial we're actually going to be implementing our own classes and using our own objects together. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is talk about a term called object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is extremely uh, common. It's becoming extremely popular in a lot of languages. So let's start off by defining it. Now, this is my definition of it, and uh, hopefully it's put in a way that's simple for you guys to understand. So what object-oriented programming is, is a style of programming data in the form of objects, which are able to be represented in multiple instances. Objects are defined by other properties uh, I'm sorry, they're defined by their properties, variables, and their methods. Okay, and what we're going to end up with is a class and object relationship where a class can actually create an object. And this object is going to be referencing what this class has inside of it. Okay, so let's just drop down here uh, to get some more in depth definitions. So our class is going to have a name, it's going to contain within it variables, properties, and methods. Now, I haven't talked to you guys about properties yet, but that is going to be in a future tu uh, future tutorial, okay? And, you know, we've talked about variables, we've talked about methods, and so these concepts should be nothing new. The only difference is they're going to be dropped in a different file. So, originally we've been, or more commonly, we've been working out of program.cs. Well, we're going to create our own CS file with this class name, and inside of it we're going to have variables, properties, and methods. Now, here's where the relationship um, gets interesting, where we have one class that can spawn or create or instantiate multiple instances of itself. Okay, so here we have this class instance, another class instance, and we can have as many class instances as we want. These instances are known as objects. Okay, so I created an, an example for you guys to, to see a situation or scenario whenever this might um, be useful. So as you guys know, I love to use games for my examples because they're, uh, they're, the, the examples are easy for everybody to relate to. So here we're going to have a class enemy, and then we have variables and a section for properties, and we have a section for methods. Now, know that every class isn't going to have all of these things. We might have a class that just has some variables in it, or we might have a class that has everything in it. Okay, we can really put anything we want into our classes. Um, and it's definitely not limited to just variables, properties, and methods, but since that's all we've talked about, that's all I'm going to uh, include in there. Okay, so our enemy is going to have an, uh, an integer for health, an integer for damage, and it's going to have a couple methods for attacking and following the player. And what we have here is this class enemy is instantiating... Uh, three different enemies. Again, these are three different enemies. They are in no way related other than they reference the same class. So an important thing, an important concept to understand is if, since this enemy is using this health variable, if his health drops, it has nothing to do with this enemy's health. Okay, so what you can think of is when this, when this enemy is created, it, uh, what comes with it is a package which in that package is this class's information. So what you might think of is outside this enemy or, in, or inside this enemy or next to this enemy, you can just picture the class is right here. So it has a copy of that class's uh, variables, properties, and methods. Um, so if the health of this enemy changes, it doesn't affect the health of any other enemy. And if this enemy is using a method, it doesn't mean that these enemies have to use that method. Okay, so this was a pretty brief explanation of object-oriented programming and the class-to-object relationship. I hope you guys, I uh, hope the tutorial helped you guys understand it a little bit better. Again, in the next tutorial, we're actually going to be implementing our own class and object, so that should help you understand uh, the concepts a little bit better. But if you like this tutorial, go ahead and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials coming up in the future. And as always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching.